Hey everyone, Outcast Rider here. Um, taking a little bit of a break from doing the Fire Emblem videos because there was a direct, uh, Pokemon Direct as they're calling it this time, which is very divisive, if not flat out negative for most people. Um, so, kind of wanted to do a little quick thing, give my opinions on that. Um, obviously, a lot of people had their hopes up for a new addition to Pokemon Sun and Moon. Uh, it was rumored that Pokemon Stars would be coming out for the Switch. Well, that did not happen because the big title that was rumored for the Switch that was Pokemon related was Pokemon Tournament DX. Woo! Yeah, people weren't very excited, at least not here in the States. Um, I'm going to play a little bit of Devil's Advocate. I really understand why a lot of people were not excited, why a lot of people were upset that it was Pokemon Tournament. Pokemon, Pokemon Tournament didn't do exceptionally well here, um, but it has a much bigger following in Japan. Not huge, but a lot of people didn't play Pokemon Tournament. It came, towards, uh, it came out towards the end of the life cycle of the Wii U, so people had already written it off by that point so it was kind of doomed to fail and I don't really blame Nintendo for doing this real release and trying to make a little bit of extra money and build build that base there's definitely going to be more of a base for Pokemon Tournament to grow and yeah there's a vibrant community for Pokemon Tournament in Japan so I mean they, they already got that locked down so why not just kind of you know exploit <laughs> monetize that market and see if you can expand elsewhere because the fact of the matter is with Pokemon Go Pokemon is as popular as it has ever been uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon even though I don't have the numbers right in front of me has been one of the best-selling Pokemon games of all time um, so yeah Pokemon Fever is you know it's it's strong right now so it's not necessarily a bad move by Nintendo um, I understand why they made the move, but I also understand why people are upset. And we'll get into that a little bit more. Um, I think part of the reason why people were really upset about this is, okay, it was bad enough that it was Pokemon Tournament. That's that's the Switch game that's coming, a Switch game that no one played. Um, that That's the thinking behind it. No one played it. Why are you making this? Um, but they are doing two new editions of Pokemon Sun and Moon, and they're called Ultra Moon and Ultra Sun. Um, and they are for the 3DS, not for the Switch. So, yeah, I, I can understand a lot of people being upset about it. Um, or just a lot of people, as with myself, kind of scratching their head, being like, why on earth would Nintendo do that? Um, they're still, they, you know, you want to build a base for your new system. 3DS is an old system, it's a six year old system. It's going to be going by the wayside. Um, so yeah, that is a bit quizzical. I still understand why they did it, though, um, because the 3DS still has this huge install base. As I said before, Pokemon Sun and Moon were some of the best-selling Pokemon games of all time, so you already have all these established Pokemon fans. Why not release it on a 3DS with you know, a, a install base of over 60 million people and, you know, they could still do a port of that because they seem happy to do ports right now. Um, they could still do a port of that somehow to the Switch. Or maybe they are still working on Pokemon Stars. And this is just something to kind of make a little extra money. You are kind of noticing that a little bit uh, with Nintendo, which is slightly disappointing. But they're still making some good quality games. You know, there's still some things where it's kind of like, oh, time's running out on the 3DS. Time's running out on making that money on that 3DS. You know, things are going to be moving over because people are not going to want to keep playing on the 3DS once the Switch starts, you know, you know, replacing all these portables. Um, you know, Nintendo is not unintelligent. Do they make weird decisions? Yes, they do. And this was a case in point. This Direct was a bit of a strange decision. However, I still think if you kind of analyze it, I think one thing that needs to be brought in mind is a lot of people are looking at it from a Western view, the United States. And not that it shouldn't be because the North American market is huge. You know, um, I believe it's the biggest market for video games. Um, and, and But, you know, Japan has a huge market, too. You know, Japan has millions of people that play video games. So, you know, it makes sense for Nintendo and Sony, and they both do this, where they publish games, they do certain decisions primarily for people in Japan. 
And, you know, does it kind of bite that, yeah, some things are only in Japan and, you know, and some things are only in North America, although that's increasingly uh, not, there's cre increasingly fewer things that come out in North America and not in Japan. Um, I think predominantly because, you know, both both Sony and, and uh, Nintendo are both based in Japan. But, um, you know, I think we just can't consider it just from our viewpoint. You do need to take into consideration some of these decisions from the standpoint of there's a Japanese market. There's a strong Japanese market. Um, and there's a strong, and there's a bigger, stronger Japanese market for mobile games. Um, and yeah, the handhelds are really popular in Japan. So you just can't write off every decision and be like, well, that was another crappy Nintendo decision. Might kind of be for us, but it's probably, it's not a bad business decision. Um, especially uh, going back to the Pokemon tournament is from what I hear from people, I never played the game, I never purchased the game, but from what I hear from some people who played it, um, there were kind of some huge limitations on it. Um, they squeezed everything they could out of the hardware and it still didn't work exactly like it should. So really, honestly, I kind of view it with the Pokemon tournament like this is the legitimate shot that Pokemon Pokemon tournament didn't have a real chance on the Wii U. Now it finally gets its chance to shine and have a little bit of fun. And then, uh, you know, but I understand uh, why people are uh, upset with these things. And, and to kind of play on concerns, uh, one thing is that it's like, oh, well, is Nintendo just content to make ports of everything. And I think I think for now, in this first year of the Switch, I think it's okay. Because um, there were a lot of games on the Wii U that didn't sell because it was on the Wii U. Uh, because that system did not sell. So I don't really blame Nintendo for making these ports. Um, but they, there does need to become a point where it's like, okay, time to stop with the ports. We need to start seeing new stuff. Because it can't just be, you know, Breath of the Wild. Um, you know, but to be fair, and some people aren't pointing to this, but to be fair, you know, ARMS is coming out. There is Splatoon 2, although people have made the uh, stipulation, or I, I don't, I'm, the right word is failing me right now, but they made the observation, there we go, that Splatoon 2 looks almost like a complete rehash of Splatoon 1. Again, another game I didn't play, but I can understand that criticism. But yeah, that's something that right now Nintendo's walking that tightrope of, you know, okay, we can do ports that are better, and they were better than the original, and we have a better system, so we can do that. And, you know, but we need to have new stuff. So, yeah, they're just doing that balancing act, and eventually they'll get to the point where it's like, okay, now we have to do new stuff. The real question is, are they going to be able to stick the landing, as it were, or are they going to fall on their face? And that's just something that we have to wait and see about. Um, so, But I do hope that they continue to be uh, conscientious. Um, some people would see, well, here we go. Tone deaf Nintendo all over again. Same old Nintendo. Um, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. I think this was just kind of a, a business decision. And no, it wasn't very exciting for fans. I mean, I got a little excited uh, on the fact that they're bringing Pokemon Gold and Silver to the Virtual Console. I was like, yeah, it's cool, finally, because that's those were the game, Pokemon games that I jumped in. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, maybe the reason why I don't feel this way is because I'm not super invested in Pokemon. I was uh, huge into Pokemon when it came out as a kid. I thought it was the coolest thing. I tried getting into it about a year or two ago. In fact, I have a, a video that I created that I will link to, um, talking about my problems with Pokemon. Uh, but basically for me, until the Pokemon formula changes significantly, it's kind of a franchise I don't really care about. Um, however, it still intrigues me because it is a huge franchise for Nintendo, and I still want Nintendo to do well. So, you know, it's still intriguing for me from that aspect, and I want to see what they're doing. But yeah, not a very exciting direct, kind of a short direct. I do agree with some of the criticism that was this, did this really have to be a direct? But, you know, um, and since I've been rating the directs, so far, though, I don't think I directed, I rated the ARMS one. So I'm going to give you a rating right now for the ARMS Direct. Um, ARMS Direct, I would have to say, I'll have to give that one a C plus, Same as the, the Switch reveal. Um, but for this one, this Pokemon one, I don't know. I'm kind of fluctuating between a D plus and a C minus. You know, it was, you know, there, there's enough, if you think about these things logically, it makes sense, but it was definitely not an exciting direct. It's not kind of what people wanted to hear. Um, but yeah, E3 is just around the corner, so hopefully 
uh, Nintendo will be doing something exciting, and there won't be disappointment. <laughs> but you never know with E3. There's always highs and there's always lows. Um, but yeah, so that's just kind of my opinions on the presentation of the Pokemon Direct. I hope to have my recording area situated sometime in the near future, still moving, um, so I don't have to use this terrible webcam. But thank you so much for taking the time to watch these videos. I really appreciate it. I hope you all are having a great week. This is the Outcast Writer signing off, and remember, what we create matters.